California. All advertising has an impact. Other are they against advertising, which is boring or in bad taste? This is Not Your Mama's Marketing Podcast, a show for any business owner or professional that isn't afraid to step out of the box to create advertising that actually gets your company noticed. My name is Brianna Duckworth, and I'm the owner and founder of GoDuck Marketing and Media in West Virginia. And I'm Lindsay Berardi, the digital marketing and account manager and Brianna's right-hand gal. Each week, we'll be discussing creative tactics that will help achieve real results for your small business. In other words, this is Not Your Mama's Marketing Podcast. Let's get into it. Hi there. We are so excited to be here with our very first podcast of Not Your Mama's Marketing Podcast. We're so excited. We've got a lot of really awesome stuff to talk about today. So the title of today's episode is Don't Judge a Brand by Its Cover. That's misleading. Totally misleading. We can't tell people that. No, Um, because everybody's going to judge a brand by its cover. If you have a business... Uh, your branding is probably the most important first impression that you can give off. And so we're going to be talking about that today and how you can um, take your brand and really make it amazing. So how are you supposed to accurately and specifically market yourself if you don't have a brand, Mm -hmm. if you don't have a brand voice, if you don't even have your target audience? Tell me, Brianna, how are you even supposed to go about that? If you do not understand who you are as a business, how are you possibly supposed to market yourself? How are you supposed to market yourself to the right people? We talk to businesses all the time who are like, we're wanting to change who our target demographic is, or, um, you know, we have a lot of, uh, we don't have very many young folks coming to our business. It's a lot of older people or something like that. And then we're like, well, you know, what's your branding? What's your, um, where are you advertising to? It all has to do with your with your demographics. Everything points back to branding. Everything. So you might think that branding is solely your logo. That's what one thing we've we've talked about with businesses before is we're like we need you, we need you to have a good brand. You have to have a good brand, and they're like, oh, we have a logo. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not. Yes, your logo is part of your brand. It's a very important part of your brand, having a really good logo. However, it's not the only thing that your brand is. That's not even step one, I wouldn't think. It starts with figuring out what your personality is as a business. Because believe it or not, yes, your business has a personality. Um, If it's been... If it is happening, it has a personality. We made sure with GoDuck, we just went through a rebrand about six months ago. Mm-hmm. And we, um, were, we've been very, very cognizant of trying to make sure that our brand is consistent, that it matches our personality, that we were able to come up with even what our personality is. So we've been saying voice and personality like we're talking about a person, but I kind of like to think of your brand and your business as a person. It is a person. That's how you should think of it. Because if you know anybody, you know, they're going to be consistent about who they are, how they talk, Mm -hmm. how they come across, you know, you want to be funny, you want to be entertaining, you want to be informational, anything like that. There's a Mm -hmm. number of things you can define or define your brand as. Think about uh, your target person. Think about the exact person that you want walking into your business or calling your business for, for your service. Who is the person? What do they look like? What's their job? What's their income level? These are all things that you have to think about um, because they're all super, super important in terms of figuring out your personality. And then once you find out, okay, here's what my business is like as a brand, then you get to the colors and the logos and the fonts and all of that stuff, which we'll get into as well. That's the fun stuff. There's actually um, a quote, and I wrote it down. There's a quote from Wayfair's brand manager, Jared Rosen. So if you've never heard of Wayfair, you're living under a rock. Wayfair is one of the biggest for an online furniture companies probably in the world. Um, I've personally bought a lot of furniture from Wayfair. But one thing that he said was, quote, brand identity is more than just finding the right logo to place on coffee cup sleeves or mount above your front door. It's about crafting a personality that amplifies the core elements to your brand's DNA. Just like a person. Just like a person. That's how you used to think of it. Literally think about you are creating 
a person from scratch. How you, like how do you want your business to come across if it was a person? How would you want somebody out there representing your business? Mm -hmm. And no matter what, here's the thing, no matter what, your brand is going to leave an impression. I don't care how small you are. Your brand is going to leave an impression. Someone's going to see your logo, your billboard, just your the your office front, uh whatever it is, your Facebook page. And you're going to leave an impression no matter what. So the right branding really helps make that first impression controllable. So let's talk about one of the biggest companies in the world, just this little indie store called Amazon. Nobody's ever heard of it. No one has ever heard of it. So Amazon just turned 28 years old, um, and its branding kind of marks its growth. It is not until Amazon actually established its voice and who it wanted to be and found the branding that worked for it that you really began to see it skyrocket. There is, you can look at graphs and see kind of their income and see exactly when they started to take off. And it goes along with their most recent logo that they continue to stick with. So I want to talk about this. The first logo that they put out was in 1995, and it was when their tagline was Earth's Biggest Bookstore. You remember when Amazon was just books? Can you imagine that now? No, I wasn't even born. <laughs> That's true. I wasn't true. even alive. When it was, quote, Earth's Biggest Bookstore, it had a very literal logo. It was the Amazon River that kind of turned, it kind of looked like an A. And it was against a very blue background that looked like water. Hmm. and it was blue and then it was maroon and then it was blue again and then it went back to maroon and it kept changing they could never figure out what they wanted it was cliche it definitely failed to convey a personality and it was hard to read it was really hard to read so then between 1997 and 2012 they played with a ton of different logos and they just kept tweaking, changing things. Um, and they finally came to some version of their final brand in 2012. And they made a logo that connected the A in Amazon to the Z in Amazon. And it was sort of the idea that um, they have everything you need from A to Z. Makes sense. It's a good, it's a good little thought. And then there was some semblance that went into every decision on that logo. So one, the orange collar reinforces joy and happiness and warmth. The lowercase letters in Amazon allow the consumer to feel invited in, making the company seem more accessible than its uppercase counterpart. You might think that sounds really stupid, and it might be, but there is real research that is attached to that, that when people see those lowercase letters, it's like, oh, it's accessible. It's uh, that. I have no idea what it's more relatable. It is so psychological, uh, all of that. I mean, and that's a lot of, in a lot of ways, that's marketing. It's very, very psychological. But you would never think colors would really have a psychological impact on people, but they really do. This has been a research campaign for decades now, how colors mm -hmm. affect if you're in a restaurant business, there are certain colors that attract more people. Like if red. You're, mm -hmm, red and yellow. That's why McDonald's is red and yellow. Red apparently makes people hungrier. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? So back to Amazon. They uh, also, that little line that connected the A to Z, they added a little smirk to it. They made it into a smile. And it wasn't just a smile. It's a smirk. And it, the idea behind it was it's a confident smirk. And now this giant doesn't even need to use the word Amazon. Like you get these packages in the mail and they show up on your doorstep and you look at the side of the box and it has that little orange smirk and you know what it is. You know that it's Amazon. And that is how you know <laughs> that they are succeeding at their brand because a simple image of the smirk on their side of the, their packages it works just fine. That's all they need. They established a brand so good and so recognizable. 100 million subscribers know what it is with just a glance. So then between 2012 and 2017, you saw their, in their income start to skyrocket. You look at the graph, I'm going to put it in this video. You can look at that graph and it just is an immediate turn up. It's crazy. But of course, you're not Amazon. We're not Amazon. Mm -mm. That's okay. 
But Amazon didn't start with 100 million subscribers. No, it started in Jeff Bezos' garage. Establishing your voice, establishing your brand, the way that people view your company. It is step one in the growth of your business. Truly step one. We've seen it time and time again, not only in national brands, but especially in smaller brands, especially uh, on, a, on a more local scale. If you don't establish that yourselves, then you're leaving it basically up to your consumers to establish it for you. Mm -hmm. And then they will create whatever image they have of you. If you can establish that and create that narrative for your customers to go off of, they won't have to be confused about any part of your business. Don't let them, don't let the people create your narrative, create your narrative for yourself. No, that it will never end well. It will not work. So... What are the signs of a successful brand? Well, I would like to think it is three specific things that make up the signs of a successful brand. Mm -hmm. One would be recall, where do you recognize their logo immediately? Can you put two and two together when you see their branding? Consistency, consistently using the same logos and branding materials. So it does help the consumer recognize them. You're going to be hearing us talk about consistency probably more than any other word throughout this entire podcast this podcast and probably all the others uh, uh-huh <laughs> and the last one is distinction does your branding stand out enough to be noticed from all the others out there mm -hmm. and more than your competition too is it noticed more than your competition yeah that might be even more important mm -hmm. and i mean listen i know we all love canva we all love canva canva is amazing however you have no idea how many times I've seen the exact same logo for Canva be used on multiple businesses. If you use Arial font, I'm coming for you. Arial Do not. Font. Arial font, Comic Sans. We can't be doing this stuff, guys. No, I'll call you out. <laughs> so the three most important signs of a successful brand, recall, consistency, and distinction. How do we make that happen? My favorite thing in the world we, is number one. Uh-huh. We know what a good brand is, but how do we get there? Number one, research, 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 research. research. Oh my gosh. Research is so, so, so important. <laughs> you can't just come into this willy nilly just off the top of your head and just think, oh, this is what people like. It, it's probably not true. It's what you like. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between what you like and what your target demographic will probably like. Research will help your internal bias, I promise you. Oh, boy. Yeah. You have to do that market research to figure out how your brand is going to resonate with your audience. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we also talked about how to learn who your audience is. You need to know who the people actually coming into your store and buying your products are. And then you also need to know who you want the new customers to be. You need to know them down to their income, their behaviors, what they like, and what they're in market for. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, social media platforms are they into as well? Like, that's something you should know. Mm -hmm. Those are all really important things to know about who your consumers are going to be. A preteen is not going to like the same thing as a 60 year old man. You know, it's that is just a fact. Um, you can see that difference in each demographic. No demographic is the same. And they like different things. They like different images. They like different stuff. So you have to you have to know who your target demographic is so that you can know what kind of content to create for them and what kind of logo will draw them in. So you've defined who you are, you've defined your mission statement and your vision, you've defined your personality and voice. Mm -hmm. That's probably taken a lifetime. So now, let's get into actually designing this stuff. You have to do more research. Color theory comes into here very very heavily. Mhm. Mm you have to do the research before you make the logo like we've just talked about. But here's the thing. Here's why. We are literally creating your first impression. Your logo is probably going to be the first thing that people see when they look at your business. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a first impression do you want to make with that logo? What do you want people to think when they first look at it? We definitely want it to be good, right? We want it to be modern, we want it to be trendy. We want it to look like something that people would be interested in. And we want it to be consistent. Consistent. And consistent. also relevant to your business and what you're mm -hmm. doing. It's Don't so forget. important. It's so important. One thing that helps is to create a brand kit, 
When we were rebranding, we created a brand kit for ourselves, um, for our new brand. Um, our new brand is, we've got, actually got the logos on our, on our mugs here. A little shameless plug. Um, but our mugs, we have this little yellow duck. Our colors are this yellow, orange, and blue that you actually see behind me on the wall. Um, all of this is super important to your brand. And it's super important when you're putting out ads, you're putting out information, you're sending out letters, you want to keep in your brand. You want to keep your um, your logos the same. You want to keep your fonts the same. You want to keep all of that stuff the same. So I'm going to include our brand kit in this video and you'll be able to see kind of what it looks like. We've got three different logos. They're all the same logo, just different use but of different. colors, a little different to match different uh, formats mm -hmm. that we've got them in to match different colors that we're putting them up back against. We only use the three colors that are shown in the brand kit. They have all of the, they have everything attached to it. The three fonts that we use, we do not go outside of these fonts when they're, cr when we're creating our own ads. And then we also have a little mood board. I love it. <laughs> we I have love a little mood kit. board that we included at the bottom so that whenever we're creating ads, we know to stay within this vein. We go with like this kind of retro theme. That's sort of our tongue in cheek approach to not your mama's marketing company, which is our tagline. So we try to stay within this brand kit and every single member team member on our team has access to that brand kit so that whenever we're creating anything, we do not go outside of this brand kit. It's really important. So some things to keep in mind when you're doing all this designing and research, this can all be too much. I understand this is a lot. If you, you might've been in business for a while or you're a new business owner and this might be all new stuff to you and that's okay, but you just need to start small. You can go too crazy with this stuff. I'm telling you, you can do too much, but you can also do too little. Mm -hmm. You wanna meet right in the middle. Do not go crazy. Do not use more than two fonts, if that, in your logo. Don't go crazy with colors because it can be too busy. Again, like in our, I mean, design is one of the biggest things that we do in our company. And if you look at our logo, um, we've got all three of our colors in our logo, but obviously there is one that stands out more than the rest and it's the yellow. It is, the yellow is our main color. And then aside from that, we do have the blue that's in our logo. And then we have just a tiny bit of the orange in the beak. So we did end up using all three of our colors, but in a very, very small way. You can have three colors, but one of those has to stand out more than the rest. Like you, you cannot have more than, you have to have a main color and then you've got your accent colors. That's just basic uh, color theory, really. And then we said don't use too many fonts. Uh, we have three fonts that we use. One is for headings, one's for paragraph, and one's for very small detail text. And that is it. Mm -hmm. That's it. We don't, we go, don't go outside, outside of, of that. that at all. Another thing, too, that really helps that we have, um, create brand templates. So we have templates for everything that we have. We have business card templates. We have a template for letterheads whenever we're sending out letters or invitations or anything like that. It will give your business a really cr um, credible and unified feel. If, you, if your emails, your letters, your business cards, your brochures, if they all look similar, that really makes a big difference in the way that uh, that consumers will view you. And we're talking about consistency, but also flexibility. So you want all of that to look the same. You want it to have the same feel, but you don't want it to look exactly the same. You don't want all of your ads and your posts to be almost copy and paste. You mm -hmm. want it to have the same feel, consistency in that way. But I know it sounds like we're contradicting ourselves a little bit, but it's it's a fine line you have to walk on. That's the problem is that it's, there's a, there's a middle ground. You can be too much or too little of anything. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent, but you have to be flexible. You can't have the same things going out. You have to be, you have to be able to ebb and flow with the way that the world changes or the things that are trendy. Um, but you have to be careful with trendy stuff too, because if it doesn't follow along with what your business is about or the things that your business talks about, then it's kind of pointless to be trendy too. 
And if you're trying to be way too trendy, then your brand or your business can fall behind very quickly. It can get real outdated, especially if you're not keeping up, Mm -hmm. especially if you're not keeping up with it. Another thing that we constantly hear from is people who have had a business forever. But then we talk to the business owner and they're like, hey, I know that we have to change our branding, but I'm just like afraid to change it because I'm nervous about, you know, what if we change it and then people don't know who we are or this, um, we've already established this whole customer base and what if we lose them? What if we, what if all of this stuff happens? There are some questions that you should ask yourself if you are afraid to change your brand and you're afraid it'll result in brand confusion, which is losing customers because you changed your brand. I don't think it's necessarily something to fear. No, it's not something to fear because every brand changes. Everybody changes. Just look at, you can look at any national brand in the world and they have all changed their logos. They've all changed their branding. Look at Nike. At Coke. Coke. Oh my gosh. Pepsi. Coke. They've all changed. Like I'm sure you've all seen the evolution. They all have changed. But it hasn't been crazy changes. Most of the time, they've kept the same color schemes, Mm -hmm. but they just kind of modernized it every time, changed it a little bit, maybe Mm -hmm. simplified it one time. That's what we're, that's Mm -hmm. what we normally suggest. We don't want to totally flip flop everything about your brand because that's when that brand confusion will come in. Yeah. You don't want to go for something that's completely the opposite of what you've already been going for. It, It, I mean, that will result in brand confusion. Slowly work your way to change. Just modernize the logo that you already have. Make it trendy. Make it modern. I'll say, the question to ask yourself, if you think you should change, but you're scared to, ask yourself this. Why do you want to change it? Actually, write it down. Speak it out loud why you want to change it. It might make more sense to you. Is it outdated? Does it no longer match your company or your values? Do you think another brand would create a a better voice for your company? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it is time. It's time for a change. to change your brand. And if you're afraid to change, if that's it, think about the cons. If the con is, I'm afraid to change because of brand confusion, that's not a good enough reason. And so your business must be evolving if you're questioning it. So oftentimes rebrands is just a reflection of that evolution in your business. So if you can even make that a positive thing for your business to go through and kind of bring light to it, then I think everybody would follow along. Branding is defining your company. It is creating, it is taking your company and making it into a person. Making it into a real boy. <laughs> Just like Pinocchio. <laughs> Just be Geppetto over there. Create your your brand as, as if you're creating a personality for your business. Each business has its own personality. Gucci is like all classy. classy. Nike is confident and kind of sassy. And all of these brands have their own personality. And that doesn't just have to be nationally recognized brands. That can be your brand too. I say when you see commercials or ads from these big brands, you know exactly what to expect because you know the brand and you know the personality. That is exactly what we're talking about with personality Mm -hmm. is when you know a brand so well that you, you know exactly what to expect when you see their ads. Consistency and relevancy are everything. And I mean relevant to your own business. You want to take in you know, some outside influences from trends and the modern influences, that kind of stuff. But when you're talking about your own brand, this has to come from you, the business owner. I mean, this has to come from you. It has to be all about your business, has to be relevant to what you're doing, what you're selling, what your services are. It all has to be relevant to you. And then you take in those external influences to kind of help your design a little bit. Mm -hmm. Change is good. It is. 
Well, that is all we've got for Don't Judge Your Brand by its cover. Make sure that if you want to hear more about this stuff or be able to keep up with what we're doing at Godek Media, you can be sure to follow us on Instagram at Godek Media, um, on Facebook at Godek Me- Marketing and Media. Um, we've got a YouTube channel. We're on TikTok. We're all over the place. If you just type in Godek Media, you will find us, I promise. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you Tuesday.